Just so you know, the church's website is up and going. Um, looks like they still have a few things to work out, but it's come along real nice. Uh, the annual meeting of the Baroque Cemetery Association will be Monday, April 4th. Um, Hesper Improvement Club will meet Monday the 4th, both of them at 7. Um, there is um, replacement bulbs, or they replace the bulbs here in the sanctuary. Um, if you want some of them, um, Contact Rick or Donna for more information. There is a parish ensemble uh, that will play at the 8.30 service in Burr Oak and the 10, 10 o'clock service here in Hesper. Um, contact Donna for more information. Hesper, um, well, they're still looking for uh, two people for Burr Oak and one in Hesper to attend the Northeast Iowa Senate June 10th and 11th uh, at Warburg in Waverly. Contact Leslie Cook if you're interested uh, by April 15th uh, for early bird registration there. A um, couple more things here. There will be an Easter brunch at Burr Oak following the sunrise service. 8.30 uh, Easter service, 17th, um, is in Burr Oak, and 10 o'clock here is, in, is here in Hesper. Um, changes to Sunday School and Confirmation, Lent, or Wednesday Lent schedule for March, uh, Wednesday school classes, 6.30 to 7, at the church that is hosting the Lent worship. Lent will be at 7, no food there. Uh, no class um, during Holy Week. Uh, there is some, uh, if we want to help our neighbors in Ukraine, uh, looks like there's a church out of Amherst, Wisconsin um, that we can get uh, initial support of the shipment and personal care kits uh, they said should be arriving soon. Checks can be made to the Borough or Hesper Lutheran and put Ukraine in the memo line. Uh, spring brunch for Hesper Welka is uh, September, I wish. Uh, April 10th, uh, 9.30 to 1. St. Grubby's Day is coming up here in Hesper, uh, Sunday, April 3rd, right after church at 9.30. Um, and April 10th, it looks like in uh, Burrow. That's everything. Thank you, Andy. Did everybody get a uh, worship booklet tonight? The Holy Evening Prayer, the little white handout or booklet. We'll be uh, doing the Holy Evening Prayer tonight. Also a reminder that there's a round coming up, and you'll be group number one, and you'll be group number two. So, is that everything I just said? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
surround and fill us so that in union with all creation we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3 verses 14 through 21. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is breadth and length and height and depth and to know what the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly, far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and Jesus Christ, and Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please stand and drink for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 23rd chapter. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him, and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. 
the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? The Gospel of our Lord. Congregation may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. He could have passed them by. He could have left those women weeping alongside the road, simply not noticed them. They were other things on his mind, of course, the terrible agony of carrying the cross, the humiliation of that cross, the reason for him doing it being undeserved. For along the way, along with the weight of the cross, Jesus was bearing on his holy shoulders the weight of the whole world. Jesus was bearing the sin of the world, the agony, the punishment, the guilt, amassed by all of us. From the beginning of the world until the end. He might have just passed them by, not noticed them. Probably none of us would have noticed. The fact is that Jesus did stop to confront the women weeping along the roadside on his way to Calvary. The conversation did take place, and Jesus did notice. Maybe we are looking for this confrontation from the wrong point of view. Not only is it significant that Jesus noticed the women and stopped, perhaps it is just as significant that the women noticed him, cared enough to take time to weep for him. What if the women had not cared? What if they had not wept beside the road? All the passion history up till now, they are among the few who did weep. Simon Peter, remember, will weep when the rooster crows three times. When he realizes his awful sin, forsaking his Lord, when he said he would stand beside him and never deny him, ever. But that is about the extent. There is no one else to weep for Jesus, to defend him. Our Savior, before Caiaphas and the high priest in the court, no one there to weep for him when he's being whipped by the soldiers, mocking him, putting a crown of thorns upon his head. On the way to condemnation, no one seems sympathetic to the Savior as he faces Pontius Pilate in the courtroom. They are crying for him to be crucified, crying for blood. While Pontius Pilate seems to realize this is an unjust sentence not to be deserved, he proceeds. He's not about to shed bitter tears. There are no tears from the soldiers that mock him and beat him. The crowds here and later at the foot of the cross, with the exception of Mary and the disciples, the crowd's reaction seemed to be hostile or indifference. But the crowds do not weep. There were no tears from the crowds. The women along the way are the only ones who weep. They noticed, they reacted, and they saw what was happening to Jesus. Do we? Do we seriously, literally take into consideration during this Lenten season what has happened to Jesus? Does it bother us at all? 
Does the story in any way move us to tears? Or have we heard it so often that we are numb to the words? On so many different occasions, different times, different ways, that it fails to impress us in any way anymore. Is our reaction more an indifferent shrug than real remorse? Perhaps even a feeling that we deserve what Jesus is enduring here. The sooner he gets done with it, the sooner we receive our salvation, our forgiveness, our promise of eternal life. It's better for us the quicker it's over. Weeping might distract him from his tasks, and we have the benefit from the task that he is going to do. And so we are no longer impressed. There is a legend called, from, or excuse me, a legend of Saint Veronica's handkerchief that among the women who confronted. Jesus on the road was a woman named Veronica. She used her handkerchief to wipe the face of the suffering Savior, only to discover that after she did, that the image of Jesus was imprinted upon the handkerchief. The legend's probably not true, but it does make the point that Jesus Christ makes an impression. To put it another way, it would be tragic mistake if we walked all the way through this Lenten season and we then walked away unimpressed. In a way, that was the point of Jesus' confrontation of the women. For if they do this when the wood is green, he said, as if to say that now is when it is possible to hear the word of God, to confront the Savior face to face, have that confrontation make an impression on you, a kind of impression that you live with all your life, that stays with you when the wood is dry. The Lord's presence, although more difficult to discern, is even more important. This is God's own son, once wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. This is God's own son, soon to be wrapped in grave cloth, lying in a tomb. This is God's own son on his way to death, a death we all deserve. We have to be really hard and not to notice, not to care. Perhaps the legend of St. Veronica is not true. But Jesus really makes an impression. At least he should.